What's up, everybody? It's your favorite last review of the year's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Iron Factory Power Glide. And I got a feeling it's not a good one to close out the year with, but we're closing it out with it nonetheless. That being said, it's on loan to me from Paul C. Once again, he's just owned my December, so to speak. Paul, I appreciate you. We're gonna take a look at this guy, but in order to do so, we need to start with accessories. He comes with one gun. Um, this is actually the, uh, like spoilers, but it's actually kind of the best deco thing on the set. The, the the burgundy is painted, the silver is painted, I think maybe even the black is painted on top, and then it has two moving pieces inside. Um, it's really nicely done, and he can hold it just fine. Now, underneath, you can take this gun and fold up these pieces and tab this in, and that becomes the landing gear um, for the jet mode, the rear landing gear. Let's take a look at the figure. We'll start with the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt is good. I think it's sharp. I think it's on brand with Iron Factory. The face plane is painted silver. The eyes are painted blue. And the crest is painted silver. The rest is red. Speaking of which, let's back out of taste. This is the problem I have with this guy. Iron Factory stuff is usually visually stunning paint-wise. This guy is not. On top of that, a lot of this stuff is like just off the bricks fiddly. Like, I think I might like that better. I'm not even sure what it's supposed to be. Let me look it up real quick on the old Googles. No, it's definitely not. But I like it. So upon further investigation, I, I found that they're supposed to kind of clip in together back here. Um, which does hide it a bit better, but still, I gotta be honest with you, man. I'm kind of digging the super exaggerated wings up top. You know, it almost looks samurai-ish to me, but whatever. I, I actually think it, it maybe is slightly more indicative of the character. I don't know. And, and you know, not, not that I'm not okay with it being stylized. I, I love the stylizations that Iron Factory makes, you know, usually. It's just the lack of paint on this guy, the lack of kind of, like, finish that, that they usually have is just unexpectedly, surprisingly disappointing. So we have... Uh, gunmetal silver there, and we have that little blue stripe. You also get a waist swivel. The shoulders, ball pegs, get you out to 90 degrees and rotate around. You have a double jointed elbow which operates off a hinge and a ball peg that'll also get you a wrist swivel. It's a forearm swivel, but it'll act the same. And then you also get a wrist hinge in and out. Uh, let's see if we need to cover anything else. Ton of junk hanging off his back. Um, you can kind of get, it's not really a, it's not really a, um, butterfly, but it kind of acts like slightly one, but I'm being super lenient. All right. T-jointed ball joints for hips. Get you the full Van Dam and the full Monty. Thigh swivel, double jointed knee. Get you the full run. A little bit of silver paint there at the lower leg and black paint, which does look nice. Angle tilt up, angle tilt down, and a rocker. All of that operates on a ball peg. I think I generally like the look of these wings up more. Um, and then I think I like these bits here folded towards the back. I'm not sure if he'll balance that way. But, like, to me, that looks a little cooler. But I, I, I do kind of feel like I'm polishing a turd. Do you know what I mean? Um, this doesn't have that Iron Factory feel to it. I hate to say it. No, you hate to hear it. Size comparison-wise, there he is with our usual suspects, the Hasbro Legends figure of the old Stunicons and the Iron Factory Old Scale. So if you are familiar with Iron Factory's Old Scale, he's exactly the same size pretty much as their initial kind of run, which I think is interesting. And then for a more modern kind of look, there he is with Iron Factory's Tarn. So that should give you a better idea of the size and how it will fit in with your collection. All right. Let's get him transformed. So spin the head 180. Bring the chest piece out. Spin that 180 and sit it on top of the back of the head. The arms can eat you up, but they're supposed to be like this. Fold the red wing down, so to speak. Fold the arm around, like spin it at the bicep almost, and then fold it back upon itself, and then bring it up so that that section of the wing will tab into this section of the wing. 
All right, obviously, same thing for the other side. Just rotate the wing down and then spin at the bicep, fold it back on itself and line the wing up with the underside and then unfurl the side piece that's kind of been dying to come out the whole time and spin the waist 180. Untab these back pieces here, get them out of the way. Whoop, not too aggressively though, I hope. Open up this, and then you're gonna mm -mm, fold this whole section down. Why do you hate me? And flip out the gun here at the front, and then close that up and then I'm going to reattach these pieces and we're just going to kind of uh, uh, probably just sit them out to the side for now rotate the thighs towards the inside and rotate the legs out the lower part of the leg outward now these pieces here actually move up and down and they're supposed to encapsulate these. Hmm. I don't like this at all. They're supposed to encapsulate these fins here. Uh, that one popped off. Let me see if I can have any better luck on this side. There, there's one. Let me see if I can get this other one. It feels like to me that it, it, it's requires some moving plastic around plastic, but now that I got that other piece on, there's the other. And after you have that, then you can tab these both together. You can bring these wings up and clip them on. It feels like this whole transformation is like hanging on by thoughts and prayers. Expand these wings here and here. And then I think you just flip down the hands I mean, surely there's a better way they could have done that. Yeah, it's like coming undone, like Duran Duran. Okay, um, I will get this cleaned up to the best of my ability and we'll take a look at it. And there's the jet mode. Um, I would definitely chalk this up in the more suggestive uh, style, but it is supposed to be stylized, right? The hands are unsightly. I don't know why they didn't fix that. It lacks the paint. Um, it kind of just looks like a pile of parts. The, the silhouette, or just looking straight down on it, kind of works. The rest of it, not so much. The silver accents do come through well, as does the black on the windshield, but yeah. I don't know about that one, homie. Uh, that's a, that's a rough sell. That's a rough sell, and I actually even feel like, maybe I got this in, but I don't think so. I mean, I, I actually even feel like this. You had to like angle the wings just to get the, there you go, in order to get the landing gear to work. And the landing gear doesn't roll, obviously, here in the back or the front. It's just sort of stationary. I don't know, man. That's a rough sell. Let me at least show you what it looks like next to Tiger Tracks, though. Yikes.
Final thoughts wise, we'll start with the negatives. Uh, the transformation looks incomplete. I don't know why they didn't get rid of those hands completely instead of folding them down. They should have just got rid of them completely. There's no excuse why they should just be sitting out there. On top of that, for robot mode, I was a little surprised at just how unstuck everything is. Like the fact that the panels that make up the portion of the wings that hold on the arms don't plug and lock in properly somewhere just doesn't seem like Iron Factory to me. It seems like a very sloppy deviation for what this company is normally ex expected to produce. I mean, and to be fair, uh, the alt mode to me is kind of hanging on by a wish and a prayer also. So like th that sort of thing just sort of follows through the whole thing. On top of that, it just lacks the kind of paint finish that you expect from Iron Factory as well. Very, very, very bizarre release. You know, it's, Iron Factory is like any other company and they're more than capable of making their own series of mistakes and errors. But I don't think any of them have ever made me be like, man, this is just trash but this might be the one this might be trash doesn't mean it didn't do anything right we'll get to that here in a second but geez who is the things I think it did do right is I, I like the general sculpt. Ooh, let's see what else. Oh, and the articulation works for the most part across the board. It kind of hits all the high notes that you have to hit. But outside of that, this is a huge failure. Just a far cry from anything I would ever expect from this company. Unfortunately, it's just a lot easier to talk about the negatives than it is the positives here. But once again, huge disappointment. But the sculpt is nice, the materials are decent, and the articulation works. That's all I got. Strong pass from me. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.